In this part, we'll learn to fetch data from the server using API. So, first of all, I'll create main page where I'll display the fetch data. Create stateful widget inside the main page and rename it. I'll call main page. Make main page, front page of the app by adding it in main file as home. Create scaffold in the main page. Now, create app bar. Give it the title. Center the title. And also give it background color. And foreground color to change the text color. Now, run this app. I'll run it as Windows app. Also run your API to make API calls. If you have not created the API yet then watch the second video of this playlist in which we created ASP.NET Core Web API. Link is mentioned this the description. Now, I'll create a separate class to handle to API calls. For that, create a file inside your lib folder. I'll call it API handler.dart. Create a class inside this file. I'll name the class API handler. Now, create a base URI property of type string. It will hold the base URL of our API so we don't have to rewrite it over and over again. To get the base URL, click on this link and remove everything after port number. Now, go to your API project and open controller class. My default root is API slash controller name which is users. Now, type this root in your browser. And it's working. This will be our base URL. Till our program runs, let's create a method to handle the get request. This method will return a future list of user. I'll call this method get user data. It will be an async method. We'll implement this method later. Let's handle the UI part first. For that, adjust the screen side by side. Create a column inside your body. Inside column, create a list view builder. Set shrink wrap property, true to handle the max length error. Item count property will be equal to length of the fetched list. For that, we'll create an empty list of type user and call it data. And initialize it with empty list. Now, set item count equal to data.length. Create item builder property and pass it this method like this. Inside it, return a list tile widget. I'll use leading property to display the user ID. To do so, create a text widget and inside it uses the data property, write index in square brackets after it to get the values of current index from the list. As text widget takes only string values and we want to display integer value. So, it's not working. To solve this, type inverted commas and write whole code inside curly brackets and don't forget to add dollar sign before the curly brackets. This method is called string interpolation. After that, type dot and display any value of the user but I want user ID to be printed. After this, I'll use title property and assign text widget to it. Inside the text widget, we'll display the user's name. As name is of type string, we don't need string interpolation. After that, create subtitle property to display the user's address. Now create the instance of the API handler class. Now, implement the get method in API handler class. Create an empty list of type user. And initialize it with empty list. Create a property URI to convert our string type base URI into URI data type. Create try catch block to handle exceptions and app crashes. In try block, create a final response property which will store the response after making API call. As we want to get data from API, we'll use HTTP get method. Import HTTP package as HTTP. 
In HTTP GET method, pass the URI of the API. Also pass header same as this to avoid unwanted exceptions from the API because I have faced these exceptions recently. Now, write an if statement, and check the status code of the response. If the status code is between 200 to 299, it means success. As far I know. Inside the if statement, create a list of type dynamic, and call it JSON data, and assign it the value of response's body after decoding JSON. Now we need to convert this JSON data into our user model object and store the list of these converted list into our data list. Here is the important part, as API is returning the list of JSON data, we need to go through each JSON block to convert it to user object. To do so, I'll use map function to iterate through all JSON data and call from JSON method from model class to create user object of this data. As we are storing these objects in a list, we need to assign to list method to convert it to list. Right now, we'll not focus on exception handling. So, we'll return just data list even if it's empty. In your main page, create a method of void return type. I'll call it get data and also make it async. Now, call the get user data method from the API handler class and store its return data into our data list. I'll also use set state method to refresh the widget tree on changes in data. Now, create init state method and call this get data method inside it to load the data on page load. And data is loaded. We need one more thing here to refresh the data manually because we're not using proper state management library to manage states in our app and also, it's not our topic. We'll discuss about it in another video series. Right now, create bottom navigation bar. Here, we'll create a single material button. Leave the onPressed method empty for few moments. Give this button a background color, and also text color as default color will be black. In child property, we'll pass text widget and call this button, refresh. Also add padding to make it look good. Now, call this get data method on pressed event. And with that, our data fetching part is complete. In next part, we'll learn about update method to update data. So, stay tuned.